Hey, a listener texted us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked about his viburnum. They were showing a little bit of leaf scorch. Here's their text. This past summer, we planted several viburnum plants behind our home and mulched the surrounding area. We have been watering when the leaves look a little droopy about two times a week during the really hot weeks. One or two plants are showing brown tips on their leaves. I am not familiar with this plant. Am I doing something wrong or is this normal for this plant at this time of year? Recommendations for their care and feeding going forward? What should I expect the plants to do as we go into the fall and winter? Huh. They water when they go droopy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to be honest with you, if they're starting to droop, cells are dying. And that you shouldn't, you can get away with it once in a while, but that should not be your signal to water. Index finger probe. (laughs) Develop a pattern, stick your finger in. You want to water deeper. Um, You know, it's basically you're not, you weren't watering enough and that that caused the leaf scorch. The good news is they're viburnums. They're tough plants. And even if they dropped every single leaf right now, they would be just fine in spring because there are secondary buds and there are also those buds are already formed for for next year but you shouldn't really make them do that because you never know when you you know put them over the edge and then those buds start to dry up that that would be a problem deep water deep water you're watering a couple times a week um you need to check the soil but it's better to get those plants out of that root zone so where the new roots of the newly planted plants are are being drawn deeper into the soil uh right now it sounds like that they were subject in the drought zone and subject to drying out hey here's a question for you did you add a soil amendment like bumper crop to the soil when you plant it i bet you didn't i bet you did it you You mentioned mulch you didn't mention any soil amendment And here's the difference. A soil amendment prepares your plants, newly planted plants, to go into your soil because you mix a 50-50 mix of of bumper crop. And and I was looking over some show notes from last year, and we explained how to plant a shrub. And and here it is, folks. It's, It's dig a hole twice the size of the bottom. Yes, twice the size of the bottom. You're going to add half the soil you took out of the hole and half the bumper crop and mix it all around. And then you're going to put the plant back in, pack more of that mixture all around the edge, so eliminating any air pockets. And you're going to have the root slightly raised above the soil line because there will be a certain amount of settling. You definitely don't want it deeper because that's going to be a problem. Uh, Go ahead. What were you say yeah, something? I was going to say, I had a customer come in the other, uh, yesterday, uh, Len, mm-hmm. and he showed me his late on cyber. He says, oh, you know, it's really struggling. You know, it looks yellowish. Oof. He came in with a cup of this soil. It was all sandy. And yeah. I said, I said, what did you do? He said, yeah. yeah, I just planted it right in that soil. Hey, look, you're giving your, you want your plants to get a fighting start, and you're helping them by adding soil amendment. But don't cheapen out. No. Don't cheapen out. Just that's what it comes down to. It's like, no, oh, no. It's yeah. like, how many times do you have, oh. have a, the liars? Oh, I have it at home. <laughs> I was like, you have bumper crop at home? Yes, I have uh, it. <laughs> they What's don't. That? What is that? <laughs> it's like, uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't want. I don't think. I don't. I don't think my wife would want me to buy it. <laughs> you coward. <laughs> really, because it's the difference between your plant living and your plant struggling and it it will help aid in your watering techniques and look you're going to need that the plants are not going to be established for basically two years and that as their root system establishes into your your soil it'll be easier to water but you're still going to have to do supplemental water during really dry spells i mean this summer late summer into the september has been extremely dry, yeah. extremely dry. And if it wasn't for the hurricane, we might not have <laughs> any rain. Yeah. <laughs> but we have not had a good substantial rain. Like my pond, I had to add water to my yeah. pond 
because it's evaporated. So it has been very, very dry. Very dry. Very dry. Um, I would recommend, you know, land uh, soaker hoses too, because a lot of people, when they water, they, like you're saying, they don't add enough deep, you know, deep water into the plants. Right. I see I see where people are, like, tapping their foot. Like, I've got to go, go, go to this. i got to drive the kids to this to right. the soccer field yeah, yeah. this it's like all right that's good enough yeah you know? that's right <laughs> where seconds. this you can just put it on a timer and let it go yeah. you don't even you don't have to worry about it and and the more water you put down the less often you'll have to water them which is what you're really looking for um again it, it has been a very dry summer we, we talked about that last week now you're wondering what to do going forward espoma hollytone you know is the best choice to do both fall and spring and that you're going to follow the package recommendations and even if the leaves are off the plants this fall their root system is still active so don't just think just because the leaves are gone that there's nothing going on oh yeah there's 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 fire down below um julio anyway that the if you feed them a spoma hollytone it's all organic it it is one of the best if not the best granular fertilizers on the market that's espoma hollytone yeah. they said they mulched yeah my son carl who who runs the the nursery at bloomers and, and does landscape uh that uh he gets uh so irritated when he goes to a house and there are mulch volcanoes around plants it. yeah and i hate it too because it, it gives first of all it puts all that mulch around the 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 trunk of whether it's a tree or whether it's a plant and it you don't want to do that you want to do two to four inches of mulch okay and don't you know basically get it up all around around the plant you want to create almost like a well effect so that the water goes down into the root system the mulch is there to protect it from drying out and also it's it's a certain amount of weed control but again, no mulch volcanoes to where you're putting it up around the base or the trunk of the of the shrub or tree. That's a no-no. So uh, add add mulch if you haven't mulched um, recently. Make sure that you're checking the mulch, but check how much you have first. Just don't pile it on. It's always a good idea too, where your mulch will get compacted, and that you can revitalize your mulch by just raking it up real hard and, and and doing it that way. You may not need to add anything. So you don't want more than four inches of mulch around your shrubs. Um, and again, you know, one thing we didn't mention is yeah. wilt stop oh, wilt or stop. wilt proof, right. uh, anti-transparent. Now for deciduous plants, it's not gonna do so much, but your broadleaf evergreens and for any of your other types of evergreens, please read the, read the instructions first but it slows down the evaporation of moisture through the leaves and needles of evergreens. Like and first bit, right? Yep, that's <laughs> right, that's <laughs> right. Uh, like chapstick for your plants. Chapstick for your plants, that's right. <laughs> that's it, that's it. So make sure you're, you're using that. I mean, I probably, I would wait a little bit, yeah. you know? You know, you don't wanna, probably October, late October, um, November, but, uh, Again, it sounds like everything's going to live. Your viburnums yeah, are going to going to flower in, the, in that. They're going to do great. But uh, every time they were drooping, they were telling you you're bringing us to the brink of damage. <laughs> so you're trying to, to figure out the balance so that doesn't happen. Next year will be easier because we are supposed to have this is a rainy season for fall and a rainy season for spring. And then when you start watering again, and say late spring that uh, it's going to be easier so it's good index finger probe that's it feel the soil know if the moisture is there or not and develop a pattern anything to add julio zamora no we hit all those uh, key elements right you're, you're doing good yep. you're doing good because you spotted it yeah. a lot of people don't even don't notice they're yeah. like oh here look <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i want my, i want to return this because i killed it <laughs> yeah. um but uh you caught it you, you caught saw it first time, so yeah. you're doing a good job nice keep up the good work